On today's episode of Easy Opens, we're going to be taking a look at the Appleseed Cast's Sag Armada. The Appleseed Cast is one of those bands that I remember hearing about just all the time in conversations about emo and indie rock in the late 90s when I was seriously getting into like music and like underground music especially. I liked the songs that I heard by them. I got their records when I saw them for like in the in the budget bins just because I was cheap and I liked everything I heard but nothing ever really stuck with me outside of a few. I liked a lot of the earlier stuff but I kind of fell off here and there and I'd come back to them but nothing like I, I just I don't think I was ready for a lot of the stuff that they were doing. Like I'd like a song or two but I wasn't fully mature enough musically I guess for what they were doing or at least it wasn't what I was totally looking for and ready for at the time that I'd heard it and that's especially true for this record but I think it might also have something to do with the fact that I felt like Sagar Matha just was a very hard word to say until I've said it a million times in preparing for this record this review and so now I'm not intimidated by that word but I do think that it probably played a key and me not spending as much time with this record as I totally should have. This record was released on February 17th of 2009 on the Militia Group slash Vagrant. It's the seventh full length in their discography. Members on this record are credited as Aaron Coker, Aaron Pillar, Chris Chrissy, Dustin Kinsey, Ed Rose, John Anderson, and Mark Young. Production duties were handled by Ed Rose, whose work you should be well familiar with if you are fans of The Get Up Kids, Branson, Motion City Soundtrack, and Ultimate Fake Book. The artwork on this particular pressing of the record was done by Dylan Marcus McConnell, who also goes by Tiny Little Hammers. They do a bunch of work for Greyface, and their stuff's really good and really neat, and you should definitely check it out, especially if you like this cover. They do some cool stuff. So now for some fun facts that I found on the internet just by looking on the internet about this record. So the vinyl pressing of this record is different than what you'll see on the CD cover of the record where you have the words Sagar Matha on the keys of a xylophone, I believe it is. Is, is that, are they called keys on a xylophone? I'm not, I'm not sure. I should probably know that. But here we obviously have the mountain with the eye looking like Sauron. Whatever, the guy from Lord of the Rings. Or, or actually, better yet, Cyclops without his visor just blasting a dude that's just, you know, over there. The vinyl also has an alternate track listing. Track 7, Like a Locust, Shake Hands with the Devil. And track 8, South Call, Get Flipped. I'm sure it probably had something to do with time constraints on the record. Like how much you could have on the... Because you run out of room. So they just flipped them and there you go instead of having a third disc with like just one song on it so that's probably why that happened the vinyl also gets a new track which is track number 10 the new stage so you might be wondering what the word sagar matha even means and i'm here to tell you that it means mount everest in nepalese and that's pretty cool didn't know that makes a lot more sense than the xylophone but I don't know. Also, maybe that's on the nose or on the mountain, on the nose of the mountain. Do mountains have noses? Is that what the tip is called? I have a lot of questions. And lastly, this record was intended to be an instrumental EP. And you can definitely tell that that was the intent. So as I mentioned earlier, I remember hearing about the Appleseed cast and all over the place when I was talking to my friends and other people at shows and just eavesdropping on other conversations at shows when in the late 90s when people were talking about indie rock and emo and punk rock and all that fun stuff and then I had a friend of mine who worked at the Christian bookstore of all places and they had a distro with Deep Elm and they would show up at local shows here in like central Florida and they would set up a table and they would sell the records for, for Deep Elm, apparently. And I remember seeing a lot of Appleseed cast records on the table. But unfortunately, at the time, all my money was going to Branson because just I, 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 I love Branson and I still do. But then I have a memory and I could be wrong about this, but 
I don't think that I am. I think he would just take them and put them on the shelf at the bookstore as well and would sell them there. And I was like, okay, that's that's cool. I'm all about that. And uh, yeah, it didn't bother me none, but I just was like, I don't know if that's legal, but I'm not going to tell anybody. So I'm just going to buy these records. And then the other weird anecdotal thing I have with the Appleseed cast is that one of my best friends and I always get in this argument about whether or not, and this is the stupidest thing as I'm saying it right now, that whether or not it was the appleased cast, because they swore to me that they went to the local community college here in town and there was a girl there that was like obsessed with them and she swore up and down that that was what their name was. And this is before the time of YouTube videos where you can see that they are obviously being called the Appleseed cast. But he was swearing up and down that no, it's like, it's kind of cool. Like they're trying to like spell it one way, but it's another thing and it has another meaning. And I was like, no, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And finally, after years and years, I finally pulled up a video of Chris saying the name of the band and just put it to rest. But it was for the longest time, one of those debates that you have with someone that you could easily solve, but you just like arguing with your best friend for some reason. I don't know. Well, with all that other way, let's talk about the physical record. I'm a big fan of this artwork. I think Tiny Little Hammers did an amazing job and it just looks really cool and is a lot different than the xylophone cover. I, I just feel like this cover unifies the record and it kind of makes it more, well, especially the pressing and the art layout in general, the, like the whole thing makes it feel more like an album and more like a piece of literal art that you are holding in your hand. Like it's not just like a pop record that, that is disposable. Like this feels like something that you are supposed to enjoy every like inch of it and just all the details that are there. And I fully appreciate that, but I just think it totally works way better than the xylophone uh, cover. And I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I just, I really enjoy this and think it's really well done. And I love shiny things. So, I mean, uh, the, just on a very base level, the fact that it's super shiny and stuff just instantly makes me think of like, really cool things like back metal on, on toys from like the eighties and nineties. And then the original Zelda uh, video game from Nintendo that was gold plated and whatnot, like that stuff like that just brings me a lot of joy. And I really appreciate that. And a lot of that carries over to my enjoyment of this record. So now obviously on the front, you have the mountain with the beams coming out of it and the beam coming out of the eye in the mountain, which is fantastic. And then you have the, the band name and the, the record title on the back, you have the song listings which is cool, and uh, all the same art carries over with, where you're seeing the, where the I-beam goes, and then you see a cityscape, and that's really cool. On this particular pressing, you get Grayface Records down at the bottom with their awesome Grayface logo, which I absolutely love, and definitely have a pin of that's just a glow-in-the-dark one because I went there in Georgia, and it's a very awesome record store and record label, and you should check them out because they're cool people. But then you open the record, and it just keeps getting better. Still the same shininess from the outside on the inside. And more similar artwork. You get like a feather or something that looks kind of like a peacock feather, I guess. Maybe I could be wrong on that. And it's just some other imagery and colors there, as you can see on the screen that I'm showing now. And uh, it's just really cool. You get, again, the Appleseed cast presents Sagar Martha. I, I feel like I need to... Oh, welcome. The Appleseed cast presents Sagar Martha. I don't know. That's really neat. And then you get a lot of um, the, the credits. You know, it talks about how it was recorded at Toy Shop, Mixtape Sound Lab, Black Lodge Recording. And it gives you all the info. You get thanks to everyone and all the other things that you need to uh, have in a thank yous and on the inside of a record. And then you get the credits of the band, which I mentioned earlier, but here they are again, and that's cool. All right, well, now let's talk about the actual discs. Is that what you call vinyls? You don't call them vinyls. Jeez. Well, now let's talk about the actual vinyl. So this particular pressing was done by Grayface Records and it was for Record Store Day. I think it was 2022, one of the Record Store Days in that year. And the records themselves, they have a hazy, light gray kind of look to them. And then sides A and B have a light pink kind of like splattering on it or like, like, I don't know. I don't know. I should know the terms of this stuff, but little marks coming off of it. 
and then sides C and D have light blue of the same thing. And I think they look really great and go really well with the rest of the art design for this record and this pressing. So one of my only gripes is that this record doesn't come with a lyric sheet. And that makes things a little difficult when you're trying to do a album review and you're wanting to look at lyrics and you get different things and stuff because you don't necessarily have an easily accessible uh, lyric sheet. So let's go ahead and talk about the lyrics or lack thereof. So as I mentioned earlier, this record was intended to be an instrumental EP, and then that all changed as time just went on when they were recording and other songs came up and they started adding a couple things. And I think that might be why you don't get a lyric sheet in this. And it's not unheard of that records just don't come with lyric sheets, but still, you know, it's always, you know, a little like, oh man, like that would have been neat, but you know, what can you do? I feel like half of this record is instrumental and the other half are songs with lyrics that are very sparse and I don't know, they're, they're ambiguous and amorphous and I guess more like poetry as opposed to lyrics for like an indie emo pop rock kind of rock and roll band lyrics. And that's could also be why they just didn't include a lyric sheet because if you just have the same refrain over and over again on a piece of paper, I mean, what's the point in that, you know? And because a lot of them are just short lines that just repeat over and over again, and occasionally they'll throw in, I guess it's like a turn of a phrase where they'll just change the, like, move the, the sentence around, like the, 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 the phrase around, turn of phrase, I guess. Yeah, that's probably what that is. And and then now it's switched up, which I love, and that's cool, and it gives, it, it changes your perspective on a line that you've been repeating over and over again, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily warrant like a full printout of, of, of lyrics. Nevertheless, this record opens up with the song As the Little Things Go, and the opening lines don't show up until 6 minutes and 21 seconds into the song, and then there's only like a minute and a half left after that. And those lyrics are, someday you'll wake up. And that's it. I mean, they say other things, but that's the opening line. And I kind of love the simplicity of it. And that's kind of something that I've grown to appreciate with this, this, this band and this song especially, or this uh, record especially. And with this record being intended to be an instrumental record at first, and then kind of morphing into something that's like a instrumental post-rock kind of record uh having a favorite song is a little weird for me on this i don't it because it kind of feels like an album in the sense that i i don't really want to seek out one individual song to hear it over and over again i just want to sit down with this record and that plays into the whole thing that i talked about with the album artwork and the art design and all that making this feel like an experience However, that being said, there is a song on this record that kind of is probably my least favorite, but only because of something that is probably very spe specific to me. And so your mileage will vary on this. And that song is The Summer Before. This song's great. It's fine. It's wonderful. It works. I like it. However, they repeat the word Arizona like a million D times. Okay, so maybe it was just nine, but still something about like the frequency or the way it was being said or like just how close it was together. I don't know. Something about it just like really just annoys me every once in a while when I'm listening like very closely to it. It just kind of gets to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, can we can we not say Arizona again? And I don't know if it's because I have something against Arizona that I didn't realize until like hearing this record. I mean, I, I like their tea. And I've, um, I've probably had their jeans at some point, I'm sure. And I think Now Now has a song about Arizona that doesn't bother me. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's more to it than that that I just don't know. But I, either way, the one thing it definitely did was it triggered a memory of me listening to the Further Seems Forever record, Penny Black. And the song on there where they, where Chris repeats, only a stone from King's Canyon, like over and over and over again. And that same vibe was here with this, 
in Ari- with Arizona uh, on this on this record, and it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And a little less than it did with Penny Black or, or or on that record, still enough to where I'm like, oh my goodness, I I don't need to hear the word Arizona ever again. But that's just a minor nitpick, and you know what 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 can you do? So I saw that this record was coming out for Record Store Day. And I was like, you know what? I haven't spent a lot of time with that record. Let me go back and check that record out. Let me go Let me go spend some time with it. So having spent time with this record and, and fallen in love with it, I really dig this record. I think it's fantastic. It's got a lot of just space and just really is a great experience in my opinion. And I've thoroughly enjoyed every time I put it on. And it kind of puts me in a in a good mood not like it's like sugary like a like like you know like a ska record or whatever but like it's it, it gets me in a place like it feels like i've exercised some emotions if that makes any sense chris's vocals are blended in so well with the music that they don't take away from like the 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 musical tapestry and it really makes it more cohesive and then the reverb that they use on his vocals throughout a lot of the record really helps to like make it feel like it's an impression almost as if it's like the faint like recollections of your own inner monologue and or like a narrator that's kind of guiding you and stuff and i don't know there's just something about that that just again makes the whole record kind of come together for me and in a really cool way. The guitars are beautifully dreamy when clean and arpeggiated, and when they kick in with some overdrive, it's just enough to give you that urgency, but not enough to take you out of of what the song is doing. And then when they full on kick in the distortion, it's big and thick and heavy, and still manages to fit in with the tone that they've set before and after those parts. The bass holds it down and has enough crunch at times to keep it just a little gritty and then can smooth out and settle in for a huge full sound. The drums are huge and very present. I'm not sure how they recorded them, but they have a room sound that really adds to the cohesiveness of this record and creates a sort of atmosphere for it that makes it feel more alive and that's that's always really cool. And then all the additional instruments and percussion kind of share a similar tone and, and, and roominess to them that create this liveliness that is uh, really neat with this record. I think it's really cool and well worth your time. And if you like anything the Appleseed cast has done up until this point and even beyond it, chances are you'll probably dig this too because it's not too far outside the realm of things that they've done before. But uh, it definitely is its own thing. So if I'm going to rank this record, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 apple seeds. Because I think it does what it was supposed to do. That It just has the instrumental parts that are cool. That If you want that, it also has some of the other pop rock, indie rock, emo stuff that, that they're known for. And it's a cool journey. It's a cool record. I really dig it. And every time I put it on, I always feel like I've like went on a journey with my emotions and just, I feel really good. Not like a, uh, not like a shot of coffee or anything, but just like a, Oh, like I feel refreshed and that's a pretty neat feeling and high praise. I would think if, if, if I did a record and someone told me that about, told me that about that. Yeah. Yeah. So if any of that sounds like something you would like, definitely check it out. And, uh, yeah. Five out of five apple seeds. All right, well, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, hit the like button. And if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button as well. And let me know in the comments, what did you think of the Appleseed cast, Sagarmatha? And did I get anything wrong? Did I get anything loud and wrong? Uh, What did you think? What did you like? What did you didn't like about the record? Let me know in the comments. And if there's anything cool or weird or interesting or fun about the record that I didn't talk about, please let me know because I'm always interested in stuff like that. And yeah, until then, else time.